Hey everyone, Wayne Fox here, back with a video. Been a while, I know, sorry about that. Got married in July, been doing a little traveling and some other things, and uh, now things are settled down a little bit, so I thought I'd get back into doing a few videos. Anyway, I wanna do a video about this new product I bought, um, Hannah Mule Portfolio Box. I don't really review papers a lot because there's a lot of other channels to get into so much detail on papers. To me, photo papers are just kind of a personal thing. You've got to buy a piece of the paper, print a print on it, see if you like it, see if you like how it feels in your hand, see if you like how the print lays down on it, see if you like the gloss or the sheen or the lack of gloss. Uh, if you're buying some of these type of papers, if you like the texture of the paper, and it's just a personal preference. As far as other things, there are some longevity issues with some papers, and I don't get into those either because that's well-researched and a lot of people get into that. And so I don't do a lot of videos on paper, but this is more about the product itself. I'll talk a little bit about the paper that it comes with, but uh, what I thought I would do before I printed this box up, I would open it up, talk about what it comes with, what what I think the intended purpose and goal is, uh, what I'm gonna use it for, and hopefully you'll find it interesting. So let's just get this one open and uh, talk about it. So I bought three of these so far, and uh, two I bought from B&H. And they weren't packaged as well. I think what B&H did is they took them out of the original box that Hannah Mule puts them in, and they uh, put them on a shelf or something, and then they just wrapped them. And they wrapped them up pretty good, but they came a little bit, um, you know, a little scuffed up, uh, but not too bad. I mean, I wasn't upset enough that I returned them. The corners were bent in a little bit. I was able to fix those. This one, particular one here, came from um, Adorama, and Adorama, uh, when they shipped it, they shipped, they, it was still in the original box, uh, which is much better protected. So um, I guess that's kind of, you know, kudos to Adorama. I, I use both of the companies uh, if I can't buy it myself direct. It's a kind of a linen, black linen feel. Uh, very nice. It's, uh, uh, there's, a, there's a, a couple of other boxes I've bought in the past, and this is more like the one I bought from a company called Portfolio Box which is pretty nice. One of the advantages of this, if you can see, this is a true box where this is recessed. It's not a, and it's not a box that you uh, just take the lid off of, as you'll see here when we open this up. Um, and let's go move this over a little bit. All right, as I open this up, you'll see that it's a hinge box, okay? Comes with gloves to handle the paper, a nice touch. Uh, quite a bit of information in it some very detailed instructions on handling the paper and printing the paper. Uh, this talks about this particular box comes with, uh, I think this is with bamboo. They have three papers that they are pushing as sustainable. Uh, I don't want to get into the whole sustainable thing. Uh, I'm not sure bamboo is that much more sustainable than cotton. Uh, people argue it both ways. I do know that I prefer cotton papers than over the bamboo, but I don't mind the bamboo. It's a nice look. Now, it is a natural paper, so it won't have a real white white point, um, which the main idea here is this is archival. And if you want a super, super archival product, you don't want a brightener in the paper. And so this one of the reasons that these uh, uh, sustainable papers are also um, long. There's a lot of longevity involved. It comes with a certificate of authenticity. To be, you can print it, print it out on this with some actually hologram seals. And this all ties to a process that Hannah Mule started, which is about artists. And I've never really researched it much, so I'm not gonna go into that in much detail. Uh, but this is actually embossed paper with their logo. And I'm planning on printing up a description of the product, uh, as well as talk about the archival uh, quality of the paper and stuff in it. It comes with 50 sheets of the paper, depending on what box you buy. Uh, right now you can buy it with the three sustainable papers, which are hemp, bamboo, and agave. I don't know if I'm saying that right or not. Um, so it comes with 50 sheets. You can also buy it with their uh, metallic paper that they have. So those are the ones that are available now. And then it also comes with 50 sh uh, sheets of glassine. So you can actually place a glassine between each print and protect it. As I said, the whole purpose of this is longevity. Uh, very nice packaging. What I'm planning on doing is once I get the box printed, I'm going to have a brass plaque or some kind of a plaque put that will have the title. Uh, this collection is actually called The Perfect Moment. 
and I'm going to have the title with my name on it and stuff. So I got the video done, thought I should add a few things. First of all, um, this is a little mock-up of the plate I'm going to use. It's going to be a black on brass plate, so it'll be like this, except the lettering will be brass. And I'm just going to attach it down here in the corner, um, something like that. I don't know if you can see that in the camera or not. Let me uh, tip that up a little bit just to kind of dress it up real simple. Um, the other thing I thought I'd mention is about the printing process, just a couple of things. First of all, this paper, as a lot of these papers are, has a real fairly serious curl. Now, the inkjet side is this side here, and typically the curl is caused because of the change in humidity from where it's manufactured once it's coated, and so this tightens up and pulls it that way. Now, a lot of printers are gonna have trouble with the paper going in this way. The edges are gonna stick up like this and catch the print head. So I thought I'd go over a few things that I've done to alleviate it and maybe give you some ideas. So the first thing I did was set up a custom paper type in my Epson printer. Now, sometimes you can't actually do this, but there are usually a few settings that you can modify that allow you to change the way the paper's handled. In my case, I can actually set it up in the printer itself and then it becomes a paper type. A lot of the Epson printers, you can do that, some you can't. But you can usually do it in the driver on your computer. So first of all, the thing I changed was the thickness of the paper. The reference paper is, I think, Velvet Fine Art. And this paper, as I researched it, is just ever so slightly thicker. So I changed the thickness to 50 millimeters. I think it was at 46, 47, 48, somewhere in there. So very, very minor, but that allows a slightly wider paper path for the printer uh, paper to go through. So basically, the, that changes the thickness of the mechanism which handles the paper. And so we widen it a little bit. Second is what's called the platen gap. Now, once you've made it a little thicker, you can also force the platen to be a little further away from the paper. That's the actual mechanism with the print head itself, which gives you a little more space. And so I added uh, that. Now, as you do that, it can degrade quality, but normally that's not detectable. I've never really seen a problem with it. And in my printer, the normal is one, and I changed it to 1.6 just to be safe. Um, what I was having trouble with, a lot of edge strikes and once you do that, you're in a piece of paper. And then the, the last thing I changed in my particular printer, the Epson 9570, was I increased the vacuum pressure to a great amount. And by doing that, I was able to suck harder on the paper. Now that still didn't solve my problems totally. So I did one more thing. I have a, a thing called a decurler and I'll throw a little video up in the corner of me actually decurling a piece of paper. I bought this one myself. It's very well made, it's kind of expensive. But the way it's designed is it has a strip on the sides that allows for the thickness of the paper. It's a very, very hard, heavy roll. And I just basically roll it one way and roll it the other. So when I'm done, I get something that looks like this. As you can see, this is the printed side here versus this being the printer side. Basically, I reverse the curl. Now, this won't stay permanent like this. Over time, it'll gradually end up more like this. So I do it right before I print. And by doing that, I haven't had a single edge strike. It's really gone through well. If your printer's going through the other way, that also helps because now the edges of the paper are back here and it's easier for the mechanism to keep the middle flat than it is to keep the edges flat and you probably won't get a head strike. So that's the couple things I did. A lot of the natural papers, uh, cotton, uh, have trouble with that. You might've had trouble in your own printer with that before. This bamboo paper seems a little curlier than other papers that I've used. So the last thing I thought I would show is real quickly how I create my book and keep it organized. So once I print the first book and get it all done, each book after that is really quite simple. And I did it all in Lightroom. I kind of experimented. I think it's pretty efficient. So if you're going to want to print anything similar to this, you know, a set of prints, that you might just have a, a group of 10 prints that you print in a collection or whatever. If it's the same thing all the time, using the save print option that's in Lightroom. Let's jump over to the computer and take a look at that. Uh, so real quickly in Lightroom, the first thing I had to do was pick the images I want in it, simply made a collection, made it my target collection, and then I went through my images and I hit the B key to put them in. Ended up with about 70 images altogether, 
And then I went back through those and by a process of elimination, I narrowed it down to 50. So when I was done, I had a collection set or collection called to print and it's inside a collection set of my portfolio box. Once I did that, I just had to go to my print module. I already had a template set up up here. You can see this portfolio box horizontal is my template. I would, to change the name, I actually uh, did it a little different way. Uh, what I would do is I would uh, have a document open and teach text with the font size and everything like I wanted it. Type that in, lavender, uh, and then uh, that's, that was uh, in Mona, Utah. That I think this was taken in 2013. All right, and then I would just hit the copy, jump back over to Lightroom. Now I can just click here, double click here, and just hit paste, and then we'll go in. Now the problem I had is every time I did this, it was a different size. So what I would do is I would click on the bottom line, and you'll notice on the left side, the, there's a little kind of reddish orange line. And all I did is I would drag that to a point, let's just use the 12 for example, and then I wanted it to be one and an eighth inches tall, so I dragged the other one up to one and an eighth inches, which automatically resizes it. As far as centering, it was a little hard. I don't know if there's a way that's easy to do this. I didn't really research it. I just would click the hand right below the square there, and then I would move it at the top. You can see the orange line that shows where the hand is, and I moved it till it was nine and a half inches. And then I also would move it up and down and position it. And most of the time with the positioning, I just, did it by eye. I got to the point where it's pretty consistent. As the images get narrower and longer, they fill this up uh, a little bit more, but it worked out pretty good. Once I did that, I simply created a saved print and I gave that print a name and we're gonna call this one throw away because I've already done this. And I put it inside the portfolio box collection and I hit create. Now I'm not gonna actually do that because I've already done it. So. If I go over to the portfolio box collection and I click on any one of these, this is what's called a saved print. So everything that we set up back when we did that other print, this includes our page setup, anything in our print settings dialog box is saved in this print. And you do that, uh, like I just showed you, once you get your print all set up, make sure that when we do it, let's go back real quick, make sure that when you do it, you go to your page setup and it's set up right. I know it is because I did it in a template. You want to go to your print settings, perhaps. Now, if the print settings are saved in your template, then they're going to come across. In this case, I went here, and you'll notice, in my case, I don't want to use the media type. One of the nice things about the new Epson printers is you can have the, you can set the paper type in the printer, and this, this will honor that. So I can just say, use printer settings. The cool part about that is I don't have to, if I decide to print this same thing out on luster paper, I don't have to change anything as in this dialog box. So it's kind of cool. And then all I do is, like I said, once I do, I hit create save print and we will save it this time. We'll call it to trash. So I know what one I don't need and portfolio box and we'll create that. So now what we've got is inside of this portfolio box, we have this layout and no matter what I do, whenever I come back to this, it's exactly like it was. And all I've got to do is hit the print button. The only other variable you might be, have to be concerned with is if you've decided to print it out on a different kind of paper and you put it on bamboo. So I can uh, click on this first one. I can click on this last one and then I can send all of those to the printer and each of them will be independent uh, set up just like I set it up for the first book. Each book will be identical very sweet, or I can just go one at a time. What I'm doing is I'm just starting at A and I'm just printing, and then I'm just printing one at a time as I go down. So it's very easy to uh, repeat and get the same results. A lot of applications for saved print. Uh, anytime you get something that you're, you know, the sizing, the paper template, everything is exactly like you want it. You just want to be able to immediately print it again. You just hit that and boom, you're done. So this box is nearly complete. I've still got six prints to print for it. Uh, one thing I would mention is uh, it comes with 50 sheets. You're probably gonna lose a couple of those sheets in the process. Uh, I ended up wasting a couple when my printer uh, misfed once. And so I bought a package of 25 additional sheets to make sure that when I'm done, there are actually 50 prints in the box. Um, now the other box, I probably won't need to do that because I've got this book all set up using Lightroom. 
So pretty cool. Anyway, let's, uh, now, you know, I'm, as I mentioned, I have a plaque here. Overall, this box is 13 by 19. It holds the paper. Box is actually a little bigger than that. Uh, when they open it, the gloves will be laying here. And I'm not going to put the gloves on because I just washed my hands with dish soap to make sure I had no oil on them. But I don't want to stretch the gloves out. These are, my hands are a little big for them. Uh, this will be the certificate of authenticity as well as the description that I talked about. And then as you can see, each of the prints are now protected with a sheet of glassine. And that makes it a little hard to, to look through, but basically I think to look through it, you'll just take each print, take a look at it, and then just take it and turn it over. Um, and a lot of times the glassine will go with it. Uh, now what I've decided to do is all of the vertical prints will be here first. And then as they get through the box, uh, glassines make them a little hard. As they get through the box, it'll switch and do the horizontal prints. Let's just go through and maybe get to some of those. And I'm hoping that it's easy to close. Let's just go down here a little ways now. And as you can see, now, we're, now we have um, landscape images. Now in this case, they would probably turn the box. Uh, in my case, you know, I just take the images and turn them. So anyway, uh, I think it's a nice product. It has a, a nice elegant feel to it. They do have a version now. You can sometimes they have it with the, the photo rag, which is my favorite Hannah Mule paper. Uh, right now that's not was not available, so hopefully in the future they'll bring that back. I've never tried their silver paper, or metallic, I guess is probably what it's called. I've never tried that, but maybe that's a option in the future as well. Um, so anyway, that's it. That's the Hannah Hill Portfolio Box, designed to create an archival portfolio collection. Uh, if you have any questions on it, you know, just ask me below. Uh, I'm actually pretty happy with the quality. Runs about $250 in that ballpark if you buy the the, the hemp or the, the the natural papers. I think it's more than that if you buy the metallic. I think it's more like $340 or 350 So overall, if you look at the price compared to the paper, the box itself, I think I figured out it's going to set you back about, um, it's about 40 of the dollars of the, is for the paper itself. Because I think if I'm not right, it's about... Uh, well, I don't know. I think you can get 50 sheets of hand mule for about $200 of this particular paper. So anyway, hope that you found that interesting. I've got a video coming out really soon about my new MacBook Pro for those of you that follow my MacBook videos. Uh, and that should be out next week sometime. Hey, thanks for watching. Hey, see ya.